podcast news line with faraz shaukat ali and very good evening to you this is news line live and we're broadcasting from the news first studios in dorset street in clambo for all you uh, regular uh, viewers there tell me sorry about the late start uh, today we'll try and fix the problem as we get around to it uh, in the meantime this evening we've got somebody um, there's a member a stalwart a staunch supporter of uh, one of the oldest political parties in Sri Lanka uh, who celebrated 69 years of uh, being in business uh, and they were formed of course on the 2nd of September all the way back in 1951. Kesar Lal Gunasekar is with me. Very good evening to you Kesar. Good evening for us. 2nd of September 1951. Uh, heady days, heady ways the formation of the Sri Lanka Freedom Party by one Solomon Westridgeway Dias Mandranaika, better known as SWRD. Also as a result of a political disagreement with the, UMD. With, the, with the United National Party. Five years later, the then new boys on the block and girls, I don't know if it was their girl there, but anyway, they, they became, they secured power and they had control of the parliament. If you look at the simultaneously breaking away from the SLP. Yes. Now if you, look at, if you look at it now, we have that other great party, the grand old party, the United National Party, which is uh, disintegrated and for the probably the first time in living memory, parliament, any parliament has convened without a sitting member of the United National Party reduced to one bonus seat and they haven't even named who that person is going to be. What's happened to politics? It's, it's an evolution process. It keeps on changing. It keeps on changing. I just wanted to mention that the chairperson of the SLFP currently didn't even bother turning up at an event uh, to pay homage. Uh, and I suppose to express gratitude and remember uh, the founder of the party, S uh, SWR de uh, in the family seat at Horogonda. Maybe he was busy with something else, but, uh, but I must say in fairness to him that he has always been uh, speaking about SWR de and Mrs. Sirimao Bandaranaika right through his political speak career. speak louder than words. I know. I know, but then uh, there are certain instances where you get held up with something else and then you may have to skip they've one got, They've got, all got a bit blasé, haven't they? But I don't know. But, but I feel that he would have been busy and therefore as a result he could not participate. So busy that you forgot. I don't you think, I, I, sorry, or you couldn't I don't think it's in. a question of forgetting, but I think he maybe would have been busy. Ah, and no. he maybe he would I, have informed. Maybe, maybe he didn't have the use of the helicopter. Maybe, maybe he, he informed the organizers as well. We don't know. It only takes about 45 minutes to an hour to get from where he lives to uh, Horogala. Anyway, let's talk of something more current, shall we? Uh, and that's on the minds of the people. What do you say about the current moves to towards uh, having, shall we call it, an elected dictatorship? Sometimes also known as the 20th Amendment. Azad Sali says that it is a fatherless it's an orphan nobody is willing to say who is drawing up the 20th amendment but it's there what do you feel a, well 20th amendment is something that needs to be studied in depth yeah. in detail right as to who prepared it nobody has come out and said we prepared whether it's a team or anything whether it's an individual they frightened we don't to come out and say i, I don't think it. i don't think they are frightened i don't know Maybe it's a team that did this. And you say it's a team then. It, they could have always come out and said it's a team that uh, for, formulated this. Okay, but forget who's drawing it up. What about the collection, the accumulation of power to the one person's office, the presidency? Well, there, there are two schools of thought. Right, and one is? One is some, some people are the will that over the, over the last 40, 50 years, um, with the system of governance, they are bit, maybe to a great extent after 1978, the executive presidency came into the picture. Yeah. 
with all that, uh, governments could not deliver to the expectations. In of short, what you're saying is, what has democracy achieved? I, I, I will not use the term, what has democracy achieved. Okay. But I would say that the executive presidency has not. Maybe there are certain pluses and minuses, but to a great extent, they may feel that school of thought feels that they have not achieved. So, try a different operation. I don't know. Could try, be. try strong man government, big man government. Possible. Possible. You, we heard of but, a place called Rhodesia. Yeah, I know. It's now called Zimbabwe. Some, yeah. Do you know correct. what it was? What what uh, Robert Mugabe did to it? Yeah. Yes, correct. Yeah. But then the question is this: No, they you are needed not, a wheelbarrow. Yes. Just to buy a bottle of but, coke. Buy buy a bottle of coke. I know that. Uh, that was the case in certain other countries as well. Now, you have to understand that once, once you do not deliver, once governments do not deliver on, on promises, etc., yeah. then there is always a possibility that somebody else with a different view altogether can come into the picture. Right. That's always the case. There's always hope for that. The uh, Parliament movement, remember them? Pardon? You remember the uh, Parliament movement? Yeah. The good governance. Good guy. governance movement, yes. Yeah. We had Maitri Palasi Risena team up with an unlikely running Vikramasinghe from the... The ideology was totally different, but they came together. They promised accountability. Uh, they promised an end to corruption. Nothing happened. I know. Nothing happened. That's, ex that's, exa the, that's the people, exactly what I feel. The people feel. are thinking, four and a half years later, what, what happened? Nothing. Correct, correct. Nothing. You lose sight of your focus then you are in serious trouble. That is, what, that is exactly what happened to that administration. What do you think their focus was? They have, I don't think their focus was anything in that, in that context. Mm -hmm. Because it's very difficult for me to answer that question because looking back uh, as to uh, whatever operations that they carried out, whatever moves that they carried, carried out was not towards a focal point. You there, know, was, there was no focus. There was no focal point and no for all their couching of everything as democratic, hardly anything in practice was democratic. No, because you had people who were uh, taken before a uh, lopsided FCID, mm. where the files that would go to the FCID was decided by a committee at Temple Trees, which just happened to be the office of the Prime Minister. Right? and the leader of the United National Party as well. That was one. We had, I, 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 load, I, we, had we had a whole load of politicians from the previous government who made the regular almost pilgrimage to the FCID office, to the remand center, back again. It was a joke. First, let me put it this way. You know, I, I, I think in, in, in the present day context, many people have, are missing this point. You know, when you elect a government, when you elect a particular government, everybody feels that ministers must do their job in such a way that you produce results. Yes. Yes. But the question is, it is the departments that have to carry out those functions. The minister or the cabinet is there to guide and give decisions with regard to whatever is put before them. Right. So if departments do not carry out the function, how we say, a very simple exercise. Now, the Yahapalana government, of course we are not part of it, the Yahapalana government came into power on the promise that they would bring to book the, the culprits of uh, so many, so many uh, uh, misdeeds. But mm. then what happened? Nothing happened, nothing came out. Now the question so is, why? Was some, I up? don't know, no the question is this now. The question is asked as to whether the cabinet is responsible, the ministers are responsible. I said no, the relevant departments are responsible. Because it is their job to do that. <coughs> ministers should not be giving instructions to the FCID and all agencies but, to do their but, job. But I, I, I'm, I'm surprised you're saying that because a few days ago we had uh, the president on a tour uh, to listen to the people first hand. And uh, some hapless official said, but there is no circular. And he was told, I am the president. What I say, consider that as a circular. Circular, yeah. And make a little note of it. It reminded me of something that uh, Colonel Gaddafi 
uh, did, in, uh, and did regularly apparently, um, he was a heavy smoker and when he was asked to build uh, in some village, he was asked to, the, the people asked him for a mosque and uh, he said, yeah, build a mosque. And they said, can we have it in writing? And so he got a pack of the cigarettes and at the back of it, he said, build a mosque and signed it and gave it. But he wasn't democratically elected. He Correct. seized power. Yeah. Do you see the difference? I know. I know. So what are, the, what, what are we going to do if we get uh, uh, a president who is not quite uh, with it? The, the, the question is there. I'm the, talking about the future. I know the question is there. You know, we all need to understand that the, the form, formation of a constitution or amendment to the constitution, we have to think of the future, yeah. not the present. And we have to think of we are, the We are okay with the present, yeah. but the future is much more important. We do not know as 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 uh, Colina de Silva and an emperor said to the then executive president J. R. Jawadana, we are okay as long as you are there. But the question is, who would come after you is is the issue. Who would come after you is the issue. So what is what is relevant is everybody needs to understand that you you bring out a constitutional amendment or um, constitution yeah. which is which has to uh, withstand the test of time and it has to go to the future as well that's very important and if you don't take that into consideration uh, you may have problems on the way quick question quick answer because you need to go for a break 20th amendment good bad or mediocre there are there are pluses there are minuses. After Both the break, are. we'll come and ask you, what are the pluses? What are the minuses? minuses? Let's see which is greater. Don't go away. After all, this is Newsline Live. We'll see you after the break. News First, Newsline with Faraz Shaukutali. And welcome back to Newsline Live. We're in conversation with the former parliamentarian, Kesalal Gunasekra. Mr. Gunasekra, you said before the break, that the 20th Amendment has pluses and minuses. Tell us about the minuses. Okay. The most important aspect I, I consider, which is a, a minus or great degree yeah. on, on that particular aspect, is the role of the, uh, the Auditor General. The Auditor General. His role has been watered down by a great extent, yeah. which is not correct at all, which is not good it's at very, all. It's difficult to see how transparency and the president's hand is going to be transparently strengthened by doing away with the National Audit Commission. Correct. And where we are told that perhaps up to a hundred or more state Organizations institutions uh, will, will, go off. will go off the radar of, of the, Audit the Audit General. General. Yes. What on earth is happening? Yeah. This is something that you, which is a little serious. We can agree with most of the things. We, we, we can't possibly, there's one thing is, we can't possibly uh, articulate a good position when right. the, the, that, that chief checks and balances Balance. man, yeah. the Auditor General, correct, is correct. going to have his uh, role watered down. Yeah. Just as much as the, okay, tell us the other thing. The, no, the question is, I think, why, I think much what we need to stress is, the role of the Auditor General is a post-event evaluation or yes. uh, checking. Yeah. It's a post-event. Therefore, there is absolutely nothing or no barrier whatsoever to the President to act uh, and carry out anything that he wants. But subsequently, it has to be audited by the Auditor General. That is, that has to be borne in mind. That's very important. Then the other aspect is, I feel, whatever said and done, the president must be answerable to parliament. His actions must be, uh, to some degree, answerable to parliament. He what is about right throughout. All presidents have been answerable. So, to if he's answerable to parliament, he's also. It uh, doesn't. What about the people? It does. It doesn't mean that he's be questioned by parliament. Then, what do you mean by answerable to parliament? You you are you act in a responsible manner. And if you don't. You don't bypass the parliament. And if you don't, if you don't act responsibly? No, 
the thing is this it's stipulated in the law in the constitution that you answer about the parliament look it's because it's, of it's those fi no fi primarily we need to understand there are three pillars of administration or governance yes but the parliament the executive and the judiciary but this all three pillars must be must work in unison and they must maintain the equilibrium but they, they must don't all, they mustn't step on the other's toes i know the equilibrium maintenance of equilibrium is prima facie important that's very important so how do you maintain that equilibrium one doesn't supersede the other right you are having checks and balances thought it's general that check and balance is being removed or so th those are the issues which i feel needs to be uh, looked upon once again i'm sure if things are uh, uh, properly uh, explained to the president and whoever the team is they, sh they will no doubt agree do, that do, those do the are. people out there the people do they understand the niceties or the impact of oh. not having independent commissions you know it's this is something that uh, is very difficult to answer you know why they all uh, funda fundamentally i would say that if you take this country what uh, what churchill thought about this country in the in the 40s yeah still applies huh? what did he still think? applies what did he, he says when he came to the issue of suffrage he said sri lankans are still not prepared to uh, exercise franchise that's what he said in very simple terms in parliament and i still feel that is true today also because if by chance people are aware of uh, the role that they play when they exercise and go and vote at an election you will never have results of this nature very simple so it is very clear that most of our people the majority does not understand i mean i don't blame them huh? because uh, there is no process of educating people there is no can process I, can of I educating ask this people. question which we again you need to be pretty quick with the answer though um democracy what has democracy achieved for our country in the face of what's happened in around Singapore Malaysia Indonesia just just look at them and look at us where are we where are they for us what we need to understand is democracy is not where the majority decides and the majority rules no that is not that's democracy that's what's about to happen no that is not democracy democracy is where you conduct affairs of a country for greater good of people of all the people important. or only some of the people greater good of people of some you of the people or all no, the people greater good of people so we need the, the majority good of all the people the majority of the people if, if, if it is all so much the better but there's a possibility that some will be left behind like that's, the minorities no no it's not a question no, don't bring the minorities no, into that's the why picture. i'm asking you no it no be either <coughs> all the people or no people no greater good of people no country yes, the greater good no of government. all the people or no. the greater good of the majority of the people no government can satisfy everybody no government in this world yes. can satisfy everybody yes. so it is always for the greater good of people the greater good of the what you're saying is the greater good of the majority of the people that's what you're saying greater good of the people mean the sense the majority of the people right would that mean the singalese people only? no everybody makes for heaven's sake don't run away with the idea that it is singalese no i'm not uh shall we take this question yeah people have elected gr i presume the president yes. to take the country forward single-handed yeah. as the whole system is corrupt and inefficient is it thus not right to give <coughs> gr sweeping powers to fulfill the people's aspiration that's what i said earlier i started off by saying that there is a school of thought which believes that successive governments have failed in their role and therefore we need a change the question is the change is good but the person who is effecting the change 
must ensure mm. must always ensure that he works within the ambit of what is right um for the greater good of the people now then um another question all audits are not necessarily post the event the uh, uh, auditor general has the power to set guidelines which have to be followed guidelines are always to be followed whether you are whether it's a private company or a public company guidelines need to be followed always but if they do away with the powers of the auditor general that's it. that's exactly what my point is that the auditor general there are the role of the auditor general is very very important and therefore the organizations that were functioning okay. under the but, under the radar of the auditor general must continue what about and the, it's in the best interest of the country what about the appointment of the judges including the highest the supreme court judges why well, it is something like this if it all depends the individual on the individual as long as the judges perform their tasks which is expected of them that's all that matters do you think the president will ever consider dapula delivera to be the chief justice i don't know we don't know but it's technically possible technically possible but he could just about have anurudh uh, as the chief justice no he will not be in a position to why because he doesn't have the necessary qualifications but the president can choose whom he wants no no if you, you need to have the power. you need you need to have the qualifications who sets the who sets the that bar that is always there that's always there the bar is always there you can't go beyond that you can't move can, there he doesn't have to go on merit he, he can just choose anyone no the question is he has to go on merit and he has to, he has to be answerable as well fundamentally to the public shall we finish the program by me asking you again is the 20th amendment in its proposed form even though we don't know who the authors are and so on is it will it be for the greater good of the people of sri lanka with certain changes it could be but you, you we need to understand that whoever acts we need to understand that they must act, act very very cautiously that's very important you can do whatever you Who want must act cautiously the president all everybody will have to understand that you know why if we say assuming i became the president and i wanted additional powers i would farm far more uh, advise myself yeah to get second opinion before i act that's very important we say in that context it is far more better we say it comes to the appointment of a judge Thank get, you. Get, get a committee to sit and uh, nominate. Thank you very much, Kesar Agarwal. Secretary, we are late for the news. It's uh, the nine o'clock news now. Uh, Thank you. Care. Have a great day, and of course, God bless you. Yeah.